Revelation 4 and 5 go together, so I'm doing them both in one video since both chapters are relatively short. These chapters, along with the rest of the book, take place in heaven. We will see many things f that happen on earth, but it will all be seen from heaven. That creates an interesting dilemma. Time is a dimension that God created for the earth, yet God is eternal. Eternal does not mean lots and lots of time. It means time does not exist. And us humans have no possible way of understanding what that means. I believe we are seeing God's eternal realm in these chapters. Keep that in mind as we go. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. The first three chapters were given to John on earth. After the seven letters were dictated, John receives these visions. It is from this point on when we see the things which shall be hereafter spoken of in Revelation 1.19. Jesus' voice in Revelation 1 was described like a trumpet, so I believe this is Jesus speaking again. The word trumpet here, and in chapter 1, are used as descriptive metaphor. It is not referring at all to the seven trumpets coming up in later chapters. But it seems that voices in the spiritual realm resemble trumpets. Interesting. I also have to point out that Jesus is speaking to John only. There is a false teaching out there in dispensationalism that twist interprets this verse into saying the entire church gets caught up to heaven right here. Don't believe it. The verse doesn't say that at all. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. John was in the spirit. What does that mean? I don't know, and I'm not going to speculate. But he was able to see the glorious sight of God the Father on his heavenly throne. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. I believe these elders are the twelve apostles and the twelve sons of Israel. That would mean John saw himself, but I'll bet he didn't recognize himself. Remember, this is eternity outside of time. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Here's another reference to the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, and is, and is to come. I don't know what these beasts are. They worship God, so I have a hard time believing that they are the four beasts in Daniel 7. They don't match in their descriptions either. Maybe the four beasts of Daniel 7 are Satan's counterfeits of these beasts. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth for ever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth for ever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. The elders praise God because he is the creator of everything. 
that's certainly not the only reason to worship God, but it's the first reason. That's why Satan focuses on Darwinism so much, trying to dethrone God as creator. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. We are going to watch this book get opened over the next several chapters. I believe it's the book of life. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Apparently the book was meant for a man to open and read. But all of humanity is sinful and therefore unworthy to open and read this book. That's why God had to become a man. In trying to understand the chronology, which is difficult when looking at eternity, these verses would technically be before the cross and resurrection. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And now we're technically after the cross and resurrection. Jesus is the only man worthy of opening the book of life. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Jesus takes the book of life from his Father. I'm not going to claim to understand what this description of Jesus looks like. A lamb slain with seven horns and eyes. I don't understand it, but I believe it. Notice yet another reference to the seven spirits of God. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Our prayers are described here as odors. I also need to point out the word saints here. We will see this word thirteen times in Revelation, and this is the first time. The saints are Christians. Simple as that. There are those who teach they are not because it doesn't fit their false theology. If you do a word study of the Bible's usage of the word saint and saints, it should be quite obvious that believers in God's word are saints. Anyone claiming the church isn't found in Revelation between chapters 4 and 19 has to severely twist interpret this word. Don't listen to them. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. The saints come from the entire population of the earth, we saints are also going to become the government of the earth during the millennium. The traditional belief that we die and go to heaven sometimes ignores this fact. Going to heaven is actually temporary until the second coming brings the saints back to the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and a blessing. If you do the math, ten thousand times ten thousand equals one hundred million. But then there's thousands of thousands after that. That's a lot of angels. And I think the point is that they are innumerable. 
and every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing, and honour, and glory, and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, for ever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth for ever and ever. The whole point is that our Creator deserves to be worshipped. He created everything. There is nothing inside of His creation that comes even close to being worthy of such worship. 